This is my final research proposal presentation. I'm Samantha King, and this is AEP 803 Fall 2013. My research was what type of technology could you use within your operation that would make it run more efficient and convenient. This is directed towards the agriculture field. Um, a lot of new technologies are being brought in and I think that a lot of farmers and ranchers are struggling using new technologies just because um, in that field you um, what do I want to say, kind of inherit ways of doing things, you, um, you know, you kind of do what your grandpa did or your dad did. So bringing new technologies in can be a little bit difficult, but I am going to show you what I learned. Um, the purpose of my study was to explore agriculture um, and like I said earlier, kind of integrating new technologies, how farmers and ranchers feel about it, um, characteristics and designs of qualitative research um, is what I am exploring. Um, and I think that the ethical part of this would be um, just being aware of people's personal feelings and um, understanding that change is difficult. So just not being pushy, um, not trying to press anything. If people want to participate, that's fine. If not, then we will go on and find someone who does. Um, as you can see, my table of contents is pretty self-explanatory. Um, I just kind of outlined what we'll be looking at in my research. My future career endeavors hope to fulfill positions that involve the evolution of integrating the latest technology within the agriculture field. Um, many of us know that the average family farmer or rancher has been raised, inherited, and is engraved in family values. Um, you know that hold precedence as to how their personal you know family ranch or family farm is operated um, you know I I personally think that I would want to adapt to something that is convenient however once you do something for so long you're comfortable with it and doing something new can be very frustrating if given opportunity, will these farmers and ranchers embrace technologies that could possibly make their operations function more efficiently, which would improve, you know, like output, input, and like money-wise? Um, will it make their job more convenient? Will they have to work less hard um, at what they do? We all know they work very hard. For my literature review, this is my map. Um, I went ahead and uh, went through several databases looking for scholarly articles um, relating to this topic. As for integration, precision agriculture technologies have been commercially available since the early 1990s. However, not only has the pace of adoption in the U.S. been relatively modest, but a surprisingly large number of producers are not familiar, which is not surprising to me. Um, I think that many of times the only reason that people become familiar is a sales rep stops by or um, they get something for free. They want to use it. You can talk their ear off all you want. You can try and sell them a product. They want to use it before they buy it. Um, because a lot of these are very, very, very expensive. Okay. Perception perceived usefulness as the belief that using a particular technology will enhance the potential user's job performance. Um, so like the perception would be that I want to make your life easier. Looking from the outside in, I want you to do better. I want you to, you know, not work as hard. I want you to make a better, a higher profit. Um, I think that 
uh, survey items used to measure perceptions about quality control, productivity, effectiveness, and improved performance over existing practices. Um, is th those are all variables that are a part of the perception. Um, often technology advances outpace the readiness of potential users, which would be they can't figure it out or they get frustrated because they don't know how to use something. Teaching, um, this I kind of found, I as for teaching wise, um, I think that going out into the field, teaching your farmers and ranchers how to use these technologies um, as they get them or, you know, if they have problems, being available for, you know, you to talk to them, you to go out there and help them work through them so they don't get discouraged and not want to use the technology anymore. Um, this kind of just talks about, this statement just kind of talks about um, students using a program in school. Um, in, I think that there is a lot that you learn in school technology-wise, obviously, right now um, for schools that are have the availability um, to purchase new technology items. However, in this case, um, it is a little bit different. These are items probably not used in a school setting. However, learning to use other technologies, I believe, can help this process in wanting to learn a new technology. Um, the potential benefits of precision agriculture technologies include reducing production costs, increasing yields, and protecting the environment. Um, like I said earlier, I think that um, being able to, you know, maybe convince a farmer that your research project did prove increasing yields. Um, that this research showed if you integrate um, new technology products that you will reduce your costs um, you know in the long run yeah it may be expensive to purchase right off the top but in the long run it'll reduce your costs um, I think that protecting the environment is becoming more and more prevalent um, as you see it's kind of a big thing right now with fertilizers and GMOs and everything people are adding to agriculture land that can possibly taint the food that we consume or that our animals consume. Um, I think that perceived net benefits is the belief that the technology will provide benefit of greater value than its cost, which is what I was explaining in the long run. It may be a large purchase at first, but on the tail end, you'll be gaining. Um, the summary, I found this and I thought it was good, kind of summed up my um, lit review. The present research focuses on farmers' perceptions of usefulness and ease of use of these technologies. Attitudes and confidence towards using precision agriculture technology and perceptions of net benefits of these technologies. I probably couldn't have said it better myself. I was actually shocked that I even found that. Um, it basically sums up exactly, um, you know, what I was hoping to find what I did my research on. So I was really happy to find that. For my methodology, um, being born into agriculture, I've always had a strong passion for keeping our land livestock and the food that is produced by both health, healthy and safe for human consumption. Um, I worked on a dairy farm. I lived on my family farm. Um, we mainly had equine, some goats, other small animals. Um, I did not have a lot of cattle on my personal um, family farm, however, like I said, I did work as a, um, a dairy technician, and um, I think I learned a lot just about um, advancing technologies in general, which I think kind of made me interested in this topic. Um, when you work with, uh, you know, apparatuses and electronics such as, you know, pit parlors that have all electronic milking systems, you kind of um, deal a lot with technology. Things sometimes don't work how they're supposed to and so you kind of got to get in there and figure it out for yourself which I always thought was 
fascinating. Um, I also feel the need to provide information, advice, and evidence that I can help provide more efficient equipment, technology, and information to improve production and efficiency within the agriculture field. That is my goal. Um, that is my career goal. Um, I want to get a job that, you know, allows me to show people new technologies. The purpose of this research study is to examine the newly integrated technologies within the agriculture field along with personal thoughts and feelings regarding these new technologies by the farmers and ranchers. Um, for starters, the data collection, I would be doing mainly interviews. Um, if someone decides that they're not really interested because I would have to like maybe possibly tour their operation or facility, um, see what's a burden to them, see what um, is taking up all their time. Is there something on your ranch that is very time consuming? Um, I think that interviews would be the best way for me to go um, just because I can really get in there and see for myself. The evidence that I will plan to provide will be my interview evidence. Um, I do have a little bit research on the technologies, which will be evidence as well. Um, but um, I think the personal interviews with the farmers and ranchers on how they feel about integrating um, this into their farm it, or ranch um, is basically the big deal. Um, the big piece of information that I am needing are they are they willing to do this? Are they hesitant? Do they like it? Um, are they not so high on the idea? I will report all of my findings under descriptive detail and interpretation. Um, I will ensure that I have accurately done the best that I can um, in regards to what I've personally observed throughout this study. Obviously, that would be taking pictures or writing down everything that is, you know, translated to me through their words as accurately as I can. Um, to the best of my knowledge, all of the information in complete form will be accurate, um, you know, as as best as I can document it. So, like I said, whether it's what I'm writing down, what I'm transferring, I will read and reread just to make sure that this information is as accurate as possible. Um, ethical concerns for me in doing this would be um, just being respectful. These are people's livelihoods. Um, you know, you can't really you can only do so much. You can only ask so many personal questions. Um, all of the interviewees will have access to the study once it's completed. Um, nothing personal, no personal information will be released. Um, research records will be kept in a locked file. Only the researchers will have access to these records um, until completed and then interviewees will have access to them as well. Um, if anything is tape recorded in the interview, it will destroy the tape after it has been transcribed um, onto paper. And um, no one is forced to do anything. This is a completely voluntary um, research proposal. And if you are not interested, we will move on to the next qualified candidate. If you decide to take part, you are free to withdraw at any time that you feel uncomfortable or, or you just decide that you don't want to do this. Um, this is my statement of consent. Basically, what it does is it just talks about, I didn't put it all on here because it's long, but um, it just talks about like what what is going to happen throughout this. Basically, you, you signing, saying that it's okay for me to collect this information, um, that you understand that I read to you um, my ethical concerns and um, that you know what is going to happen throughout the process that you're willing to back um, back out at or that you have the option to back out at any time that your name will not be released to the public by any means that you will receive a copy when it is complete um, a a typical statement of consent in other words read the fine print the results that i expect to receive um in all honesty i i'm not expecting I don't know exactly how I'm feeling about it. Um, I think that, like said earlier, change is very difficult. I think that the older, 
per se, I guess. Um, the older crowd would be um, less interested um, just because they are, they've done things for so